Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the issue of why so many people support magic cheaters. And it is more of a philosophical issue than... So I have very strong beliefs. And they ooze out of my videos. And I'm not going to apologize for that. I'd rather be real than fake. If I wanted to e-bag for money, I would you would never know how I feel about divisive beliefs. And one of the core beliefs I hold very near and dear is that you should always become as strong as you can. And the stronger you become, the more you can provide for the people around you, your employees, your vendors, your workers, your friends, your clients, and so on. You ya has not only disappointed himself, he has disappointed the entire Japanese and the Asian magic players. He has disgraced them in terms of he is the number one Asian player right now. He got caught cheating and it wasn't clever, it wasn't smart, and he had he had it wasn't like he was working at an office and he stole from the company because the company underpaid him or treated him poorly. He was one of the best treated Magic players in the history of the game. Elected in the Pro Tour Hall of Fame in 2006 with Owen with a 90% vote. That should tell you a lot. And he had money. He had plane tickets. He had a $75,000 base salary with incentives to play at a million dollar tournament once every few months. And yet, he still he's still asking for evidence. He doesn't say he's innocent. I would like him to come out and say, I'm innocent or I'm guilty. And that's it. There's no explanations. There's no gray line. It, the question is, did you cheat or did you not cheat? One, another of my core beliefs that you may have picked up from these videos, and especially if you've gone to the other channel, um, I think that... If you made a mistake, you come out and you say you made a mistake. This is true from any of my work I do. Um, mistakes happen. I own a marketing agency and not every month. If your marketing agency or anyone in your life, if every month is better than the next month, but you don't notice any more sales, something is wrong. The... In marketing, we have a lot of marketing ninjas, samurais, jedis, even from their titles. Like You would be surprised by how many resumes I receive where their job is marketing ninja. Um, I talk about that on my other channel, but that just shows you. It's a good indicator of where marketing currently is that you have companies called Scorpion Marketing, which is one of the largest marketing agencies in their name of Scorpion. I don't think people have positive experiences with scorpions, but that's just me. When you make yourself really big and get there, you owe it to represent the communities that and do the best job you can. And that's why I stayed where I live. Um, I live in one of the most violent and poor, uh, economically poor places. I know that somebody say Flint, Michigan is worst. You know, I have never been to Flint, Michigan, so I don't know. So I'm sure that there are worse places because I do believe I can be changed. I do believe I give a coding class um, every single month. And my CTO, who is a female, imagine that. My chief technical officer is a female. She gives a coding, a 24-hour coding where it's a fundraiser, but we pay the money per hour coded. Uh, you can look at our GitHub gutter list to take a look at some of the projects that uh, they worked on. And the money is donated for code for her or something, uh, a female coding. So I think I can see that differences are happening where I live um, because I'm representing my community as best as I can. A lot of you are always angry and you, know, you, you don't like my opinions and you like people who don't have opinions. Or are you like someone like you, Ya, who's two-faced? You have to act and behave like how you act and behave. Um, sometimes I will have made a mistake. But if the news about you is always positive all the time, something is wrong. No one's perfect. 
uh, this is what I tell many prospects that if you're marketing, if every single month your marketing is better and better and better, but there's no phone calls, there's your, let's say you're selling cars, you're not selling any more cars, you're selling less cars, but on the marketing report, it looks like you're doing a lot better in terms of clicks and impressions, then you have to conclude that none of that matters. It's the end goal here. Yuya has a clean reputation. An absolutely speckless 90% into the Hall of Fame in 2016. That's a very high percentage. That is an incredibly high percentage of people who had a vote and voted for him. You don't well, you won't see that in many sports, right? Maybe Michael Jordan, but even Terrell Owens had to wait. Uh, eventually he was let in and then he was angry about it, but he's a great wide receiver. And not comparing these two, right? Yuya had a speckless reputation. He had a very clean many years of playing, and then suddenly he gets caught for something that, in my opinion, is is being stupid. Poorly executed. However, I would forgive him, and I would delete every one of these videos if he comes out and says, I, did a mis- I made a mistake, I cheated, and I apologize for it. I will do better. He's still saying that he wants Wizard of Coast to present evidence of him cheating, you know, hard evidence. And that's not something that someone who's innocent would do. Um, even if you are innocent, like in criminal court, a lot of sometimes many innocent people take a plea deal because they don't want to be felons. They just plea. Most cases in court are settled. Civil and criminal. It's a plea deal. I'm not saying that innocent people should play guilty because that is absolutely not what I'm saying. But out of all the people who get caught, Yuya and Alex's fake apology and uh, Andrew Yanyak, Jerry Bercelli, Marcelli as call it, Carve Ho, not one of them has come out. Like I would expect one of them to actually have cheated, right? Some of them are pretty obvious on camera. Or any of the people I have caught cheating they always lie about it and that's the part that i think is the worst of the whole situation if something bad has happened to your client or your friend you need to tell them you don't sugarcoat it because what you're going to do is if you want to keep that client in the work i do a lot of people will lie to them and give them fake information. So it seems like every month they're doing better and better and better. But then a comp- company is going down the drain. Eventually that company is going to bankrupt. They're not going to get and you're going to lose that client because that client has lost their business. I rather be realistic and say, hey, this is what we promised and we didn't deliver it. Um, these are options that we can do and let's stick with it. Honesty is very important. Um, a lot of times I make jokes about Wedge, but I think it's pretty clear like what's a joke and what's not, and what's actually honest. I don't believe he is a... I believe there are a lot of YouTubers, I'm not going to call any of them directly out, that are not honest because you don't actually know who to... You probably can guess who I voted for in the election. You probably can guess what my feelings about Jeremy, and Christine, or any of these hot topic issues, judges, right? These are issues that are very important to our community because they affect actual people. When you have a judge who's been convicted of heinous crimes and he's around children, that's actual danger. That's real physical danger that could be happening. Or, for instance, you have Owen, who, again, according to Kotaku, and it's, quote, many sources, which is only four of them, is doing bad things to women or putting pressure on women or you have Efro who's pressuring people to concede to him because he's awesome. People don't want to hear about negativity all the time, but the positivity of our community, I don't think I need to add to it. I think that's already handled. I think there's enough other YouTube content creators who will talk about how awesome the community is and you know won't talk about cheaters ever will never talk about yuya 
who will never talk about Owen or his interesting situation, which who knows what the blank is happening with him right now, but it's interesting nonetheless, who will never talk about Jeremy, who will never talk about... My core belief is that it's easy to be the person who's positive and bubbly, and I can do that. I can fake that so well. Because uh, I used to do that when I was at NYU and law school, and I was very popular. There's no point in faking it online. There's just none. I'd rather talk about topics I'm interested in, like Yuya. And it might seem like, oh, this is the 100th video on Yuya. I was talking to one of my biggest critics, um, and he is a huge Wedge fan on Facebook. And he absolutely hates me. Uh, he doesn't have. He has not had a job for three years. He's been sick, and but I listened. That's something that a lot of YouTubers are not gonna do. You know, I listened, and I actually made a joke about starting a GoFundMe, but I think he took it the wrong way. I spent maybe half an hour, maybe a, maybe an hour, just chatting with him. And learning about that. Because that's the whole point of YouTube to me. Is that you can have people from different backgrounds. Magic. What does magic mean to me? Uh, magic. My best store that I've ever been to. Was in Williamsburg, Virginia. When I was a law student. And you had people who had all different backgrounds. You had people from the college. William Mary College. You had young children. Which was a safe environment. Imagine that. You had um, owners, you had people who worked at Chili's, at uh, Line Cooks. You had a guy called Gavin who would become my best magic friend even till today. Um, and he went to community college at Norfolk, I believe. And he would drive down to, you know, play and it was great. You had a guy who was a uh, historian and he was, you know, dressed up as a colonial Williamsburg historian from the 1960s or not 1960s, the 1690s. I believe it's 1690s. I used to be really into that geeky stuff. Um, yeah, you can hate me or you can love me or you can have indifference to me, which is, I think, the worst of the three. But at least you know where I stand on issues. And at least you know that um, you probably can guess things about me that you have no idea about other people. And I will take the time to talk to you. I don't make that public because my time is, I don't have much of it. And But if you're sick and you have not found a job in three years and you hate me, my guts and you're a biggest web supporter, I'll post your resume to all the recruiters who contact me on LinkedIn. It's over 5,000 of them. And see if you get hired. What, if I post something on LinkedIn, it'll get maybe 100,000 views by the end of the day. Many of my posts get a couple million views. I'll post that guy's resume, even though he's a big Wedge fan and he hates my guts. I'll do it because I think he's qualified and I think he should have a job. It's okay. One of my favorite video games when I grew up was Dynasty Warriors. And, and there's a scene that, I, again, I only had one friend in all of high school, middle school, elementary, and so on. And we used to play Dynasty Warriors a lot. And there's one scene where Chow Chow says that sometimes you have to wear the face of the, the mask of the villain. I'm not quoting it directly, but to do the most good. So hate me. Hate me with all your heart, but I'll still try to get your job. Hi, guys. Because I believe that jobs and not e begging and working hard. Walmart pays $14 plus an hour on average. It came out. You work hard. You protect your own. And that's it. Bye, guys.